I'm here with Fumika Kiyoka, the director, producer of the documentary Read, the life and the works of Roy K y Kiyoka. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having trouble with that name for some reason. So this is about your father mm -hmm. and kind of his life and you went back to research it, correct? That's right, yeah. Um, well, my father died and I had been doing it, uh, um, some work on another film and I had interviewed him about a certain period in his life and then when he passed away I, I realized that I hadn't let him talk <laughs> and I'd really regretted that so um, I had to go and piece together his life from interviewing different people in his family and, and, and friends and he taught um, art uh, right across Canada and um, there were many students and people that he was involved with in the art community, so that's kind of how I, I put the film together, <laughs> discovering my father, yeah. Yeah, so what was the process like? Obviously, this documentary was giving you more insight on your father's life than you would have ever imagined to know. What was that feeling of sitting here and listening to these people talk about your father? Um, well, some of it was very surprising. Um, some of it was actually quite painful. Um, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd known about um, the, what happened, the experience with Japanese uh, Canadians and Japanese Americans, but I'd, my father never spoke about it. And so when I was trying to find out about it, I, I, um, I actually sort of had to sort of live it. And it was really painful to, to you know, so uh, it wasn't easy. It was a very, yes. very difficult film to make, <laughs> let's put it that way. But. Um, and so how do you feel about it now that it's complete and you get to look back at it and kind of be like, I went through all of this hard times listening to everybody talk about my father this way. How did it make you feel when you came to the conclusion of that project? Um, well, for one thing, it made me realize just how um, my father, he really took care of people right across the country in terms of the arts and brought up many, many people. And, and I felt very proud of him um, and I felt uh, incredibly relieved that I was able to put his life and reali realize that life is so short and so precious, you know, th that we really have to enjoy each moment because it's, you know, it's only there. When I went from that point to that point, oh, that's his life, yeah. yeah. But he, and he lived the life of 12 normal people. And you said there was a poem of your father's that you wanted to, to recite. Would you oh, like to yeah. go for it? Okay. Okay, this, my, my father, as well as being an artist, was a poet, so this was a, a poem that I remember quite well, and um, it was, it's about a place in Japan, it goes, um, Itsukushima, the gate, the ravenous gate through which the mind, alias the wind blows on its way to becoming a huge sky house. Call it the celestial house that breath built we both know what breath can build, breath can steal away. As if unassailed, Hiroshima lies a few hours away. Have you had your share of airs today? Could almost be any day of the year. You care to name, name it. Name the time and place. Put father there beside a child feeding the holy pigeons while all around. The green swarth hides a once charred hearth. That's just a piece of the poem, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much. And yeah. when can we see the screening of the documentary? Um, at 4 o'clock tomorrow. That's Friday at 4. It's called Read the Life and Works of Roy Kiyoka.